welcome back to the channel in the previous video we have discussed about the narcs neural network and its application in understanding and predicting one day ahead and two day ahead discharge so continuing this series of videos in this video we will discuss about another type of machine learning algorithm which can be used for understanding complex relationship between different variables so the neural network which we will be discussing is extreme learning machines so when coming into the background of extreme learning machines these are the algorithms which belong to the same family of neural networks as feed forward neural networks a simple distinction between a feed forward neural network and these elms are these elms have only a single hidden layer compared to having n number of hidden layers in feed forward neural networks so if we see the simple architecture of elm here we can see that there is a single input layer as common as for every machine learning algorithm but in the case of hidden layers in this elms we have only single hidden layer which is the distinction between itself and the feed forward neural network so using this architecture the elms tries to understand the complex relationship between variables and give us a good prediction coming into understanding about the general context and the distinction between itself and the feed forward neural network is in a simple feed forward neural network we just uh, multiply the inputs with the weights and add bias to them so that it understands the relationship between the input given and the output and later assign the weights accordingly so once we have understood about the weights which are added and the bias functions which are used so that we can get the result to the near to the idea which we want then we use the activation function and repeat these layers number of times that is based upon the number of hidden layers which we have and then we calculate the output based upon this training function and based on the error calculated here the network brings back the error into the model and then again repeats the same thing until we get a good result so this is how a simple feed forward neural network works but in the case of extreme learning machines here we omit the step of step 4 where repeating it number of times because here we have only single layer so we don't repeat the functions which we do in the step 1 2 3 again because as i have mentioned earlier it is termed as single layer feed forward neural network so there is only one hidden layer so once this is done instead of having a back propagation in the feed forward neural network here the model tries to create a inverse matrix so that it gets the results near to the output which we desire so as again here again it is a single layer so it does not repeat itself again because it's not back, back propagating anything so the step 4 to step 7 is omitted so if we go to understand the simple equation behind this extreme learning machine we can see that this equation is somewhat similar to the equation of feed forward neural network as we see here l represents the number of hidden layers and hidden units which we will be using in the network and n represents the number of training samples so based upon the number of training samples the n value differs where the major distinction here compared to a feed forward neural network is that we have a value uh, termed as beta which is the weight vector between the hidden layer and the output layer we have the same thing in the feed forward network but here we use it to an another extent so that we get a good result even though if we have a single layer in hidden layers so the w generally represents here is the weights between the input layer and the hidden layer where g is the activation functions which we'll be choosing there are wide range of activation functions like sigmoidal uh, tan sigmoidal etc where b is the bias vector which we as we have already mentioned earlier that the bias tries to move the results of an algorithm in favor or against an idea which is trying to work on so that is what the bias vector does and x here generally represents the input vector so as i have mentioned again earlier the major distinction between the standard neural network with back propagation and the elm is that 
here we are naming this weights between the hidden layer and the output layer as beta and we use this matrix so that we get the result desired to our output. So another thing which we can understand in this ELM is the learning algorithm. So how does this learning algorithm function? Similar to any neural network again it initially assigns the weight randomly and adds bias which is generally 1 and uses this information to try to understand this relationship between the input and output and give us a good result. So once we have this hidden layer output the thing which we do which is distinctive to ELM compared to other uh, neural networks is here we use this output uh, weight and add it to the hidden layer output thereby allowing it to make a good prediction of new data using this output weight matrix. So using this simple understanding uh, we can predict a new data based upon the training of the matrix. So this is the simple understanding about extreme learning machines. Although I am sure like this is not a very brief uh, explanation about the ELMs but we will be learning more about when we see the code because it's always easier to understand the working of an algorithm when we see a code. So these are the basic things which you can keep in mind about the hidden layer inputs, the output layer uh, weights and the activation functions which are important and which distinguish the ELM to another neural network like feed forward neural network. In the next video we will see the code and try to understand this concept of ELM better and apply it also. So if you have any doubts or any confusions regarding the ELM and its equation you can let me know in the comments and I will answer them as soon as possible. If you like the content and understood the concept give this video a like and subscribe to the channel and also share with people whom you think this information could be useful.